Just under a month ago, fire ripped through this town, wreaking havoc along the way and traumatising a close-knit community. There's still a sense of shock in the area. Many affected are just taking one day at a time. The stories of survival are still raw. Some faced life and death situations, and it's considered a miracle no people were killed. Tonight, Fiona Breen tells the story of one young family caught up in that Friday's chaos and their precarious run to safety. That's quite smoky. Mm. Still black out here. Just days after the fires rushed through their property between Dunalley and Connolly's Marsh, Tom and Alice Gray and one-year-old James are reliving a race for survival. On Friday, January 4th, Water bombers spurred Alice Gray into action. First off, I thought for a second it was raining. And then I realised my house was being water bombed. And then I looked out my kitchen window and saw the trees behind our house were on fire. And then I just grabbed James and the dog and drove to the jetty. Tom Gray was putting out spot fires around the sheep property when the young mother and toddler raced to the closest safe point the couple's oyster farm. The threat of burning plastic oyster baskets soon forced them to move again. Our whole con concern and aim for the entire day was to keep James out of the smoke. Um, that, was our, that was our reason for moving, for moving Alice from the jetty to this, to this point. Um, I was concerned about the piles of oyster baskets and plastic material which I hadn't considered previously. Um, so that's why I, I, I rang Alice and said it's time to move. Alice Gray drove through thick smoke towards Connolly's Marsh and her relative's waterside home, a safe haven that would soon burn to the ground. It was just so smoky. I mean, I knew, that, I knew where I was on the road. I, I had that much visibility, but I just didn't know what was in front of me, you know, like where I was travelling to. And you didn't know what it was going to be like when no. you were going to safety, really? No, and that's the only time when I thought to myself, I can't believe I didn't evacuate and that I put my baby in danger. That was the bit that scared me more than anything. Did you fear for your life at all? It wasn't until we had to leave the jetty that's the time when I was the most frightened the whole day. Because I didn't know if I was driving into worse conditions than what I was in. The smoke was thick, there were flames there, and I kept thinking about the people in Victoria who dry, died in their cars. And yeah, I just didn't know if I was travelling to a worse scenario than what I was coming from. That was the scariest part of the whole day. Like so many chased by fire, they abandoned the house for the sea sitting in the ocean as a howling northerly brought flames to the shoreline. The water felt like it was the same temperature as the air, so, and it dried so quickly. Um, we probably came quite high, but then we got up onto rocks, and I was probably sitting in it up to here, for, probably up to about the tide. Was, the tide was quite low that day. Yeah, so there were rocks we could get in amongst, because it was the smoke. I didn't think I'd burn in the water, but I just had little lungs I had to look after. And so just getting low rocks around us was important. Holding her son in her arms, the young mother spent four hours sheltering in the ocean. The worst thing was we knew that um, the houses around us were exploding because we could hear gas cylinders and boats would come around and say, can we take you somewhere? But they we didn't know where we could go because every, everywhere else was on fire. And also I knew if we stayed here, Tom would find us. Because the phones weren't working at that stage, so we couldn't tell each other that we were OK, which was just horrific. It was frustrating. What did you think at this time when you didn't know what was going on with Alice and James? Well, I knew I had left them in good hands by sending them to my aunt and uncle's house. I knew that they had a evacuation plan. I knew that they were coming to the beach if it did get that far. But it, I found it still incredibly frustrating, um, you know, when, when the phones didn't work. Um, you, you, yeah, I, it's a, a feeling I can't describe. 
hours later, the young family reunited. And I came along the road in, in the tractor trying to find Alice. I just, by that stage, really needed to see my family. So I moved some power poles out of the way and ended up coming through the paddocks and found them still in the water. She was still in the shallows here at 9pm. 9, 9 like many in the communities affected by the January 4th fires, they're taking one day at a time. Every day is a little bit better and we just chip away at it each day and uh, we will recover, as will the community. The main thing is that no one died, um, is which is a miracle. What about the future for you guys here? No, we're here for the long haul. My family have been on this property since 1924 and we're not going anywhere. Um, We've taken a major hit, as has every business and uh, household in this whole community. Um, but we'll take it day by day and pick up the pieces and rebuild the fences, replace the stock and the equipment we've lost and move on.